It was well, drafted twice as often in the West, but they lost every game. Yeah, and before the East, this event, I guess I would have said that. It was a little bit more true. But yeah, there were so many Ember picks in the wild card, and there were a surprising amount yesterday. Um, if stats serve me right, is his win rate positive right now on it's, this? It's negative event? overall it's at TF5. Negative TF5. overall mm -hmm. at TF5. Okay, that's what I, I thought. assume excluding wild card. Because um, a lot of the stats have been excluding the wild card. But, I'm, not, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Ember's pretty darn good here. Damage over time, good against Bloodseeker, because it's all magic damage, at least until he gets BKB. Um, and not to mention, you can stop him from moving for up to three seconds using Searing Chains at relative safety. So, oh, yeah. And Rupture as well, it's not that big of a deal. If As long as you have a remnant far, far away, it does no damage to you as you jump away. So yeah. Ember Spirit is, as a whole, very good against Bloodseeker. But if Bloodseeker, if Ember Spirit doesn't have an escape and he's silenced, he's going to die because he has very low armor, very low agility gain for an agi hero, and he builds all damage items, so at his uh, armor doesn't get any better there. So there's yeah. a chance that Bloodseeker will be able to kill him, but right now this this lineup just looks so good for C-Deck, and I feel like Empire drafted Five themselves into a weird support duo and then further made that worse with the offlane Darks here. Oh, okay. That's a new hero. <laughs> Invoker. Not very popular on this patch, um, but still, I, I think, definitely underrated, which is not a very bold claim given that he has picked almost never on 6.84. Yeah. Uh, almost exclusively Quas Wex as well. There's been very minimal exhort play. Um, I I don't know what kind this is going to be. They don't have a setup for Sunstrike, so surely it has to be Quas Wex. Yeah. I mean, it could be a Forge Spirit build as well. I, I'm not sure what the win rate of NCS from Invoker mid is versus an Ember, but I feel like Exhort uh, going to Quas Exhort build would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Again, low armor on Ember Spirit, so you can punish him in that way. Yeah. But at the same thing, if Ember gets ahead and you're playing Exhort Quas, you're going to get wrecked, and that's why they picked the TA here. Because they're like, alright, we don't actually want to lane an Ember Spirit versus an Invoker. We'll play him in a farm role. We'll do an aggressive dual lane with a Tusk on Dying, and we'll see if your tri lane can deal with it. And it is going to be a tri lane Bloodseeker, so Resolution is going to have to go 1v1 versus the TA, and that is not a good matchup. And I, I'm pretty sure that's going to force them to have to even maybe put Winter Wyvern to harass mid, perhaps, because it's just historically a bad matchup for Invoker. It's historically historically a bad matchup, and also forcing Bloodseeker into a tri lane is yes. never ideal. We've talked about that quite a bit throughout our string of games today. He was actually even in a tri lane in the last series we saw, at least for a little while, mm -hmm. and we saw some of the weaknesses of that. So, yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree with you. This Empire draft feels a little three. funky, at least on paper. I guess we'll see how uh, how they execute. They do have a fair bit of team Five fight though once three. they. Spend to group up towards that mid game. Yeah, they do. Um, I think the Iron Shell from from Dark Sea is going to do a decent job at harassing the Ember Spirit at least in the first couple levels. Um, he can use his Flame Guard to block Prepare the magic damage, but only blocks so much. And to be honest, I feel like it'll actually get burned through quite rapidly uh, from the Iron Shell. So well, yeah. we'll see how things go. Yeah, I think okay. a lot of this is going to come down to the mid lane, honestly. And it, if the dual offlane for C deck, I assume it's a dual offlane. If it gets a bunch of kills, they're they're obviously going to snowball the game, I believe. And, but the, the lanes to watch, the mid lane and the off lane for C-Deck, I believe. Okay. So with that, we'll introduce some rosters here. Game number one of Empire versus C-Deck. We've got Yoku on the Dark Seer. He's stationed up in the safe lane, so it appears Empire will go for the aggro try. Resolution on the Invoker. Going Super Saiyan mode here. I'm loving it. Silent here. He's on the Bloodseeker, and he'll be joined by Aloha Dance on the Winter Wyvern, as well as Always Want to Fly on the Dazzle. And for the Dire Team C-Deck... We have aggressive playing the Ember Spirit in the safe lane, putting a little bit of a lane ward down in the off lane. Got XZ playing the Tusk, uh, partnering up here with Garter on the Undying. And the two supports, Q playing Lena, I'm sorry, and uh, Shiki playing Templar Assassin. Am I missing a support? I oh, like it's those... uh, it's the uh, either the Tusk or the, or the Undying, depending on. Yeah, Garter is usually the support player of the two. Okay. So. They both have stouts, actually. They have the same item they build. Stout and Mango. Okay. So they really want to win this dual offlane, and that means that the other support probably really the sacrificed the Lina. Uh, not, not that much, actually. So, yeah, I guess they don't have that much regen. That's probably why. Okay. So we'll see how these lanes shape up. Will Empire commit to the aggro try, or will they do something different? Appears to be the former. Aloha Dance poking around in the mid lane, but he will flap those wings towards the top. This is a very interesting aggro tri lane from Empire. Not a trio of heroes that I would normally peg to be Ooh, in a position. Oh, that's oh. Be in trouble. 
Yeah, walks right up to the high ground, takes the decay straight away. LSA from Q. He's, he's fine. I don't think they have the follow up damage. Yeah, doesn't even need to use the Arctic Burn. He's fine. He has the boots advantage over his opponents. I think Got he him. wanted to ward maybe right on that hill or something for some vision or something, but I'm not quite sure. A lot of damage being done. Yeah, he could oh. actually die here. This, be a first this is pretty dangerous. He's solo. He's got refraction. He pops a cold snap, comes through. That might be enough. They get him in the first one. Oh. Holy crap. That was not... Oh, man. He, he was like, oh, I want that CS. That's going to be totally fine, but the damage sources from Winter Wyvern, they're just absolutely oh, cut through. Oh, my gosh. Aggressive. He goes for the Searing Chains right as the Creep Wave comes in, and instead of hitting both heroes, it hits two creeps instead. That probably would have been a follow-up kill here in favor Ooh. of C-Deck, but Oh, nice heal bomb there from the Dazzle. Action Very unfortunate game. for the Ember. Yeah, already starting with a bang. So it's a Darkseer versus Tusk 1v1. That's pretty good for Darkseer. Uh, but that does force Silent to have a rough time in the off lane. So, and Soneko, or I'm sorry, Aloha Dance is going to continue roaming on the mid lane. Most likely to make sure that Invoker doesn't get completely wrecked. So the sacrifice is going to come top. Silent will get less farm and just might die. Yeah, is this a worthy trade-off? Bloodseeker, as we've talked about, is one of those heroes that doesn't really play that well from behind. When he really shines is when he can get a good start and stay an item or half an item uh, up over the opposition. This oh. feels like, of, of all the heroes to put in this kind of a sacrificial lamb role... Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Do. I mean, I, I think the hero does need to get some guaranteed farm, and that's why he's going to the jungle right now, and I think this is the right solution, because against three heroes, it's too dangerous, honestly. Uh, always want to fly is going to stay top, though. Uh-oh, Shiki in trouble again here in the mid lane. The cold snap comes out. He doesn't have any more refraction. The Arctic Burn helped tick it off, and that should be another kill. And Volker right. picks this one up again, and Silent, well, he's at least nearby to get some extra XP and gold out of it. That was that was pretty cool. And even silent rotating over, he gets some experience gold or some AOE gold. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, picks up a coiling blade as well. So he's just gonna jungle, man. Pubs, they teach you things. You know, you said in this draft, there's no way he's gonna jungle, but uh, I guess where there's a will, there's a way. He doesn't oh, have too many choices. He wasn't gonna start jungling, yeah. you know. <laughs> he was never intending to jungle. Yeah. But but now that it's in this position, it's absolutely worth it because he's not gonna be top. And there's no reason to bring Dazzle into the jungle as well because he can just sap experience. He's level three already. Yeah, this he's is great. Just transitioning to the old off lane Dazzle. Totally normal, good stuff. Happy times. Gets a boots at almost three minutes. Like that's great for him. Mm -hmm. And this is overall now leading to a really big experience game. If they would have started with this, C deck probably would have just aggressive tri lane and completely punished him, but because they're in this position, it's okay. Yeah. Look, even Q is losing the harassment battle to always want to fly. Oh, Dazzle he... needs to be careful, though. No points in Shallow Grave at 100%. Oh! Yeah, but he gets the kill first, knowing his limits. That's the power of the Dazzle right there. Nicely played. What a great kill from always want to fly. I, I thought he was screwed there, but getting that kill before his opponent killed him, I think that's worth it. He got a sentry ward out of that, so a bit of a gold advantage there. Yeah. Um, you know, some in some ways, maybe not the best, but uh, let's see, Dazzle got Lena, and then Ember Spirit got the Dazzle. So a bit of an advancement for Ember Spirit, but it really screwed the Lena over. Look at her items now. 100 gold and a TP scroll. So Ooh. it's beneficial to the Dazzle, and it's really detrimental to the Lena. So even though the Ember Spirit got some advancement out of it, I, I think it's going to hurt the Lena in a huge way, and that's the hero to kill that early and punish if you can. Yeah. Uh, Darkseer versus Tusk, kind of a farm war, both sides just getting a lot of CS. Neither really able to, to kill each other too easily in these uh, these early levels here. The mid lane, even though uh, Resolution has been able to set up kills on Shiki twice, still not really winning the farm war. This TA It's tough, man. Living up to the uh, the matchup expectation. Ooh, we lost this clarity push in there. Um, he does have phase boots, so his damage is a lot better now. A little bit of engagement top. Yeah, Yoku is rotated up top alongside Always Want to Fly. Dire Courier yeah, like gets picked this. off by Aloha Dance. They can be really aggressive with this because, uh, you know, Darkseer's already going to be in melee range, and then he can just cast Shadow Wave on top of him to do a uh, mix of magic and physical damage. And now, aggressive, despite getting that kill, is in a really bad spot. And then uh, XZ on the bot lane as Tusk is going to hit level 6 really fast. But Bloodseeker can kind of just jungle if he feels unsafe, so yeah. this is looking really, really good for Empire right now. Uh-oh, they scout out aggressive. Yoku puts on the Ion Shell. He's going to move into the tree line here, and this could be rocky for the Ember Spirit. Well, some support nearby, though. It's Garter. Tombstone's down. Decay on, too. Always want to fly. Needs to be a little careful here. He did hit level 4, so he does have the Shallow Grave. But another Decay Ooh, stack, and they are in flight. big trouble. All right, Heal Bomb to try and deal with some of these creeps. And they killed him again. These creeps are not dying to the tower. The tower's taking damage. Tombstone's gone. Okay. Pops the Clarity Potion, get a little bit of heal up here. And he's going to wait to do damage to this if he can. 
Empire already with a 1,500 net worth lead, 500 experience in their favor. And, oh, this is a kill down bottom, but here in the mid lane, this is what they're setting up for. Shiki in a lot of trouble. They were ready with a dust. No more refraction. They've just got too much damage. Oh, Tornado will connect. Will they actually get him here? Shiki live one more. Oh, oh, oh one oh. HP. He actually had one He's HP. Aloha Dance healing up now from Cold Embrace. He should be able to escape this, I think. Popping a tango, he's going to run people far away. And he's actually got a soaring out of that. So he bought up before he died. Not the worst thing in the world there, but they definitely wanted that, that TA kill. Yeah. That's damage variance right there. That means if one hero happened to RNG to do slightly more damage with a range attack, that was a dead TA. Mm -hmm. So a bit of a big loss there. Yeah, very unfortunate for Empire, but still they forced the TA back to the well, so Resolution gets some space in the lane. Lena trying to leave some XP, just could just get picked off here. Hastern makes juking that. Never mind, he got hit by the LSA, but now he's going to be able to chase him down. That last auto attack secures the kill, and Resolution finds himself a killing spree. Really nice here to get an early haste on, because he doesn't usually spend his early money on a bottle, so he's got this extra 24 damage that most heroes don't have at this point. Normally they just have bottle and brown boots, so it's kind of cool to see him be able to get that extra leverage out of runes. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom lane, they did get a kill onto Silent. Yeah, just that a oh, a one. second one? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, a second kill. And that's that's the person they need to pressure, the person that's behind. And Nalina went there immediately upon being behind, and now she's caught up because she just sat behind, went on in with the tusk, and did the follow-up stun the first time. Don't know what happened the second time, but a twice-dead carry is a bad place. Yeah, Yoku putting a lot of pressure on this top lane, though. He's just unrelenting here. Not much the Undying can do about it. Uh, any melee hero just struggles against Darkseer in this kind of a scenario. Tower down to about 250 HP. And we'll try to find some extra gold for their Bloodseeker who needs anything he can get, though. On that same token, Shiki is actually below the Bloodseeker on net worth, so... Something to be said for pressuring this TA as much as uh, C-Deck is pressuring the Bloodseeker. Silent even having a little bit of trouble jungling here. Oh, please don't die. He's gonna be okay. Alright, there's the big heal. He's got Rupture now, so this means that he can start getting some golden experience through Rupturing. And the rest of the C-Deck says, hey, where's Bloodseeker? Let's go find him and let's kill him. We'll see if they find him. Good ward, I like that. It'll yeah. spot him. Nice high ground ward there. Take a look at how much vision that gives. Even a little intel towards that mid lane. Dyer's top tower. So aggressive. Attack. How's he looking here? Face boots up. Uh, turning into the offline attack. Ember Spirit for now, but it's been pretty good to him. Dyer's top tower. There's the end of the tier one tower up top. Yoku will finish it off, and it'll be the beginning of his mech headdress now secured. Just one of the really nice things yeah. about Darks here, like, he wins so many 1v1 matchups, and if he isn't against a tri-lane, he can just abuse your lane and get a ton of farm, and that's exactly what he's doing. 51 CS, including some neutral creeps, so... And very quickly pressuring top. They find a courier. Will they get it? It does go down. That's 500 gold. I don't know what that was in the courier, but... Oh, it was a, it was a glove of haste. Here. Oh, yeah. For uh, Shiki. Yeah, yeah, so delay treads by three minutes. That's actually pretty huge. Garter up top. He gets dove on Cold Snap, sets it up. He'll try to heal himself, but the soul rip just isn't enough. Now Q, he's here. Ghost walk from the Invoker, but Yoku, he gets left behind. Nowhere to go but death. Shiki trying to pressure Aloha Dance. Resolution. Will he reveal himself here? I think he's just going to run and let his support die. Yep, absolutely. So it ends up being a one for two. Kind of an overcommitment there from Empire. Yeah, not so worth it there. Uh, it took a little too long to kill the Undyne in that fight. He just kept on surviving. Yep. So, uh, with, despite delaying the treads on the Templar Assassin, she's still to get, able to get a lot of gold and experience out of that kill. And uh, she'll be really happy with that, considering her start. Mm-hmm. So, again, Glenn's got the graphs. It's Empire still holding on to a decent lead, about 3k net worth, 1500 experience, just shy of the 10 minute mark. All three of their cores on the top of the net worth shard itself. Very impressive. I still can't believe how well this Bloodseeker is farming after this abysmal start. Wow, he actually is really high. You're totally right. Although some of those may be neutral, so, and they give a lot less gold per kill. No, even just his net worth. He's 30, he's even with the, the oh Ember my. Spirit right oh, now. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's good. Ember had a bit of a tough time. They're going to grab a by Dance. Yeah, ends up putting the Golden Brace on himself. Break. There's but, a Grave. Okay, that's going to buy him some time. Oh, and he flies right over the shards. This is looking really good. He's actually pretty high in HP. Just needs to kill the zombies. He's fine. Yeah, they killed the Tombstone. Now c on the back, but Cold Snap onto the Ember Spirit. He'll be able to make it back. They rupture him. Do they actually Ooh, want to dive this? Left. He might get killed, actually. Oh, he almost got silenced there. It was right on the edge of it. Always when a fly goes in way too deep. Doesn't oh, have the shallow deal. grave. He's dead, though. Nah. Really good attempt there. They might throw the ult on resolution. He's going to have Ghost Walk. Use it. And oh, the dust they dust used. He's in trouble. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Laguna from Q sets it up nice and easy. So, Cedek get two freebies out of that. Overcommitment from Empire once again. 
Yeah, just the slide out plate, overestimating whether or not they can kill the Ember Spirit. He's just not vulnerable to rupture in the slightest. It's pretty clear there. If that was any other hero that they ruptured, they definitely could have killed him, but not that guy. Mm -hmm. Mech has come out on the Darks here, though. Great timing on that. Ten minutes in. Brown Boots, Soul Ring Bottle. Actually number one on net worth in the entire game. That will not stay the same for the rest of the game, but in this early part of the game, there's almost no hero that farms faster than Darkseer, so no huge surprise there. And it is a hand of Midas on Silent, so he went Treads right into Midas. Still a, a very standard build here on the Bloodseeker, and an 11 minute Midas is still a, a pretty solid timing, all yeah. things considered. I think that's really good. Uh, G was picking up most of the time around 8 minutes or so, maybe 6 in one of the more ridiculous games, so he's got to be happy with that considering the start. And that's with Treads first? Yep, Treads, uh, Treads Poor man, same build basically is what yep. he's got right now. Just a couple of minutes earlier, and right. that's with owning his lane and getting, you know, yeah. farming the whole time. That's when you get stuff. two kills early on rather than getting killed twice. I think he might spot this Ember Spirit. He does see him. They knew he was here in the first place though, because they had the ward there. But apparently they don't want to go and try on him. He's got some backup here, but C deck will just retreat. They did finish off uh, the tier one tower down here in the bottom lane as well, so it levels out the tower, tower count one apiece. Kind of looks like Empire wants to fight, but instead they shift resolution back to the mid lane. He's pretty close to Orchid. He's had a really good early game. Only 40 CS, though, is sometimes typical of uh, invokers or mid heroes when you roam a little bit too much in the early game. You get those kills and it increases your GPM, but it reduces your CS by a bit. Q bumps into Aloha Dance, misses both the Dragon Slave and the LSA, and the Wyvern will just fly away. I like this Winter Wyvern build the best, uh, the Max Splinter Blast one, because the, the nuke is very spammable. If your opponents start pushing, you can very easily clear the creep waves. And you can also just farm. If it's not safe to farm, you just shoot the blast just like this. Boom, 195 damage done to Lina that she's not going to get back anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can be a little bit mana intensive, but he has a soul ring, so that makes it very easy to spam and just continue pushing these waves in. Exactly. Top lane, soul, oh, resolution goes in onto aggressive, hits him with an EMP tornado combo, one last auto attack, not enough. He sips the bottle and it keeps him alive. Another close call, but Empire will be repelled without another kill on their side. And how many times that guy got away just barely in these team fights? He's had so many close calls, and it could completely change the game if he was able to get those kills. Yeah. Garter trying to do what he can in the bottom lane. He's now level 6, uh, picked up his Arcane Boots here on the Undying. He's had a pretty solid presence so far, 0, 1, and 4. Really good stacking by the Lina, one of the things that she's been doing as she did get killed. Uh, is that, oh, did they knock at the D ward? Yeah, they can see that. Oh yeah, she just... Say, was, Doubled back there for a second. That was weird. But it looks like C deck are just going to sack this tier two up top. They'll just let Resolution as well as Yoku just clear out the creep waves and take a freebie tier two. That's one of the earliest tier twos I've ever seen, especially this one. It's almost always defended, but it's guaranteeing that TA is able to take the Ancients, and that'll pick her up probably a Blink Dagger is most likely what she's aiming for. This looks like a uh, four stack here, I think. It's it's a good stack. That's a big one. Really good gold for her, um, but there's also pressure mid, so Empire is taking this advantage of saying, you're all off the map, fine, I'm just going to hit your towers, and they're doing that well. They really are. Silent, still farming neutrals, they'll be on the high ground here, do they have the vision? Nope, they got to cut down those trees before they can see it. And they get a ward up on the high ground, very aggressive from C-Deck here, only 14 minutes in. So they definitely want to keep eyes on this Bloodseeker, and possibly rotate and try and gank him. Well, they found him, he's mid. <laughs> yep. Exactly, it's uh... What's the, what's the Blood Rage EMP Tornado sound? Hmm. 50, 200 damage for the EMP currently, and about 300 for the Tornado, so it's pretty good. 500 damage yeah. combo, boost that up by about 30%, that's that's damage reduction. Yeah. So Blink Dagger is out on the Dark Seer also, so now they have some initiation oh, power. That's so early, if you can grab a good Wall Vacuum, it could completely swamp this team fight. They deny the tower instead. A good read there. Uh, Blade Mel will be the next pickup for Bloodseeker. I like the choice versus the TA. Once you break her refraction charges, it's going to be really good answer. But the important part is breaking the refraction charges in the first place. Yeah. Bottom tower this Tusk doing a slightly attack. different build from what we've uh, seen more regularly. He's going for the the Guardian Reeves here. Arcane oh, really? Boots right into okay. Mech. So doing the kind of more utility support Tusk rather than that. Uh, like Blink Dagger initiating style. You know, I think that's really smart because Empire has a Dazzle. Like, the, the burst damage is great and all, and you think like, oh, I'll beat the Dazzle by just bursting faster, but half the time it doesn't work, and then your Blink Dagger would much rather be a mech. They're going to find each other in the smoke. Always want to fly one first. Really bad initiation for him, at least. 
Not able to grab himself. And the TP is coming from Empire. Oh, they're going to grab the vacuum. They Maybe. Fight oh, this. they drain his mana. He can't jump. Aggressive in a lot of trouble here. Snowball and Cross. They need to be very careful against the Starks here, but now they initiate in. Yoku taking huge damage. They've already lost their Witcher Wyvern. They've lost their Dark Seer as well. It's a disaster for Empire as they jump on resolution. Four for nil as C deck erupt in the mid lane. One of the downsides of the draft there is that they needed Bloodseeker to be the first one in. That way they could counter initiate. They needed somebody up front, tanky, to take the hits and then turn around with the blood right and the vacuum wall and the EMP tornado and all the good stuff. But C deck completely split across and nobody got caught except for the mana burn on the, the ember spirit it was just enough for empire to sense blood and they ended up overextending and getting completely cleaned up i, there. I was surprised they took the fight the me too the real advantage there is that cdec had the high ground so empire didn't really know exactly where they were or what was going on other than their dazzle died all right let's emp tornado and try and isolate the uh, ember spirit but the dark seer got jumped on his blink got broken and you know it's a great pickup this early on but if it gets broken when the fight starts then it's a pretty big sunk cost that doesn't offer you yeah, you're just transferring your net worth back to your opponents when they do kill you in yeah. a slightly greater rate than before. So Good read from C-Deck. They go right into the Roche Pit after that Tier 1, and that's uh, very that great. early Aegis. I mean, the fight could have definitely gone the other way if Empire played a little bit better. Maybe with their positioning, didn't get caught on the Dazzle, but that's what happened, and that's a big advantage going to C-Deck now. Mm -hmm. So, Yasha on the Ember Spirit. Oh my, this is... Slightly different. I like it. Face boots from Yasha. It's a it's a manta for the okay. orchid that Invoker is building because otherwise it would be way too easy for Invoker to solo kill him. Yeah. If he didn't have his flame guard up, he could just very easily silence and finish him up. So yep. completely like standard this. there. In this situation. Yeah, I was gonna say completely standard yeah. against the uh, Quaswex Invoker. And speaking of that orchid, it is now completed. Good timing on that for resolution as well. So there's still gonna be this window before the manta comes out and. There'll be quite a few opportunities for uh, Resolution to find some pickoffs. I think once this uh, gets to do his inventory, we'll just see Ghost Walk hunting for solo pickoffs as long as he can get away with it. Bloodseeker's actually going for the full Sun Janasha build. He's not going to be building a BKB first. A little surprised about this, um, especially because his HP is slightly low right now. But yeah, that's that's his plan. Okay. Going for these early it's, combative items, that's for sure. Doesn't make him good against Lina, and Tusk is a little bit scary as well, but BKB doesn't do a huge amount. It's pretty good against Ember Spirit, I guess, in the early game, late game, it doesn't do much. But, you know, a lot of Ember's damage right now is just magic and being able to uh, Searing Chains you, so I'm, I'm a little unsure. Might see a gank here in the jungle, Invoker's yeah, Invis. They might catch Sheik here. Remember, he is the Aegis Carrier, and the rest of his team smoked up right behind him. Could they find a catch here? That was fast. Oh, they burn a dust. They know that Resolution was nearby, but they still couldn't catch him. Yeah, very smart for him to pass through. Like, it was hard to get that kill. Oh, this is James onto Aloha Dance. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, he was immune to physical, but not quite the magical. So that'll be an easy pick off there. Yeah. Nicely done. Lena gets credit for that one. Resolution that couldn't have team fought that. Originally, I thought, oh, EMP tornado, easy. But I checked his skills, and he was ready for the gank build. He, you know, he used uh, Ghost Walk, obviously, and he had Cold Snap ready in case he found a solo hero. But instead, they're all grouped up, and they're not going to get picked off. And that's, you know, one of the counters to that ganking build. He spent all this money on items that could have been maybe a Midas, maybe could have been a build towards a hex or something like that. Instead, gets nothing from it. Well, now rotation down bottom. Silence seems to be the target of choice for C deck, but a blood right. Will break up the fight and have plenty of space. Ice shards. Can they catch somebody? Just harassing a little bit. The resolution wants to grab somebody, but it's a little tough. Tornado's picked up now. 16 seconds towards uh, EMP if needed. Can he catch anyone? Throws the super long range tornado, catches Tusk only. Orchid on to Lena on the low ground. Oh, they rupture, okay. But can they actually take this fight? So Zedek are ready to do it. Now Shiki goes in onto Resolution. Hits him with a Melt Strike, and it's pretty big damage. Aggressive from the other side, but they don't have the detection. Instead, they'll go for Silent. He'll use the Blade Mail. And Snowball forward. There's the Tombstone. Empire, they really want to commit to this fight. The EMP will do a little bit. Garner, he gets caught oh, that's by good. the uh, Witcher's, uh, the ultimate there from the Witcher Wyvern. And Aloha Dance will just barely stay alive on the other side of it. Laguna Blade out onto Resolution. Oh, grave. Shallow Grave as well. Aggressive trying to finish him off. Won't be able to do it. Now he gets Silent. He'll turn the other way, but Q's there. It's this back and forth through the alleyway. As now always want to fly, gets caught by the Searing Chains. No grave to save himself. He will die. Oh, aggressive. Finishes oh. off aggressive. He might be able to get Q here as well. Dark Seer caught Back by him the in two. Gets him. Nice Man. And done. Triple kill for Yoku. 
What a clean up from the Darkseer. How often is the Darkseer the threat in the fight? But he really is this game. And he's actually pretty good against the TA as well. Throw the Iron Shell on somebody. Bam, reflections are gone. Bounty Room picked up by Resolution. He spots out Shiki. The Aegis is gone, but there is no way that he can deal with them when he only has 270 HP. Another one of those really chaotic fights. It was all these little 1v1s back and forth until one team could make the power play and the one would retreat. And in the end, it was just Yoku that, that cleaned house. Very nice. So Guardian Greaves up on Darkseer now. That'll be very useful if anybody gets low, which is, you know, all the time with Grave. <laughs> they can get that supercharged 15 HP per second and the 15 armor boost, which is really good against TA and very good against Ember Spirit as well. Yep, also gets the mech on a slightly lower cooldown. They saw always want to fly in the jungle. Oh, he's in trouble. He doesn't have yeah. TP on cooldown for so 40 good. seconds. There's nowhere to go. Can Grave to buy himself a little bit of time, be a distraction, but yeah, Tusk even just body blocking him here for good measure. Good night, sweet Dazzle. Good ward positioning for that spots I'm running through. That's the dangerous part about that ward. There's almost always a ward spotting you heading to that area, and then they may figure out that it's actually there later. Yeah, looks like, uh, yep, Lena swings around. Obvious that she that he placed the ward in there, and very, very easy to ward. Nice heads-up play there from Q. So even though Cedek are still behind, they're giving Empire a good run for their money here. Behind by only about 1,500 net worth. Darkseer, as well as the Bloodseeker farming well, but everyone else on Empire struggling a little bit. The two supports in particular, oh my, the Dazzle is just so broke. He's got a medallion, but... Yo, he's a rich Dazzle. What are you talking about, dude? This that's is true. great. That's like... Okay, well, I guess it's really the Winter Wyvern that's broke thing, because they're both playing the five right now. Yeah, Winter Wyvern usually has a bit more farm than this, but a lot of deaths are, wow, that's an easy invoker kill. Yeah. They used a uh, slight of our Searing Chain, sorry, for the two-second duration. It means that even if he tries to go invis, he's going to get killed there, and he does get killed. Yeah. He, he has a hard choice here. He needs armor to deal with the TA. But he kind of needs a magic community. I, I feel like maybe a force staff is the option, but he kind of wants a ghost as well because the TA can just blink meld on top of him, and a force staff will not stop that half of his HP damage that comes through. It's it's a tough invoker game, honestly. He really needed to snowball hard from this orchid, and I feel like it's gonna have a lot of trouble shifting in the late game because he needs so many items right now. I mean, frankly, he was doing better before he picked up the orchid. Now that he's hunting around, C deck seem like they know exactly what he's up to, and yeah. they are ready to deal with it. Maybe it's time, Empire. Focus more on the, the team fight efforts rather than sending Resolution out on these solo missions. No, I like what Silent's doing here, just hitting the Tier 1 tower. Yeah, putting some pressure on the other side of the map. C-Deck, looks like they'll be able to grab a Tier 1 tower up top. Glyph has already been used, and yeah, Shiki will secure the kill there. They're going to keep on going, try and force a reaction out of Empire. They'll start to rotate over. Oh, yep, two TPs back straight away. Their entire team, exactly what C-Deck wanted. Man, this Lina's playing so well. Remember Dyer's when he died against the Dazzle? Well, he's 6-3-6 and six now. He's got a Yule Scepter. He's doing, wow. with Arcane Boots and Yules, at 23 minutes as a support is, is really good. He actually has 57 CS. I don't know where the heck he got that, but... Yeah. He's been killing creeps, apparently. Playing this very greedy for. He spent some time in the jungle, and... He's definitely picked up a lot of kills. Wow, you're right. He's been very active so far. Deso up on TA. Ooh. Who's gonna get one shot? Dazzle. Definitely Dazzle. Not quite the Invoker, but that Minus Armor is really gonna hurt. Initiation mid. Comes the Orchid. Winter's Curse as well. Aggressive in some trouble they here. Got vacuum in. All right. Buy back though. He wants to get back into this fight. ASAP. He'll come around the backside and oh, now Empire possibly in some trouble. Resolution will stay alive, but the rest of them taking a lot of damage. Dazzle will be Walrus punched. The wall just not doing enough. Undying cleaning it up. A three for one if you count the flyback. And Ember, or pardon me, Winter Wyvern will stand his ground. No getting away from that one. Only the Darkseer will survive. Again, C deck with a fabulous team fight. Man, they just, Making it look easy. They just start things off, but they're getting rolled over immediately afterwards. It looked great for them after they killed the the Ember Spirit, but it it they just died. They just tried to get away and nothing happened. Nothing worked. Tulsa yeah. chased. Uh, TA jumps forward, blows people up, even like a tombstone. They just have very good run at them heroes, and I feel like Empire's lacking tanky aggressive heroes. Like maybe if they had a 
like a That's bristleback okay. instead of a bloodseeker. Like imagine how different the game would be if they had a bristle instead of a bloodseeker. I feel yeah. like obviously they picked the blood early, so they're committed to it. But they need someone that can be up in the front that at least limits C deck running at their team because it's all squishy right. heroes like Invoker, Winter Wyvern, and Dazzle. Like the grave is obviously buys them some time, but if they don't, if they can't stabilize during that grave duration, it doesn't do anything mm -hmm. other than buy five seconds on and, somebody's life. You know, you look at the start, you say, well, he could be that tanky frontliner, but that's also not really a possibility. You need him to counter initiate for the wall vacuum. You absolutely yeah. need that damage, and you also need to make sure that he can use the Guardian Greaves to help out the team. If he's the one in the front line, then he's kind of mecking himself rather than the yeah, team. Yeah, and that's less deficient. And he, his damage isn't as big of a threat as a hero like Bristleback, so True. if you don't, if you have somebody that's super tanky but you do no damage, then the enemy team just ignores you, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what Darkseer would do. He's just got Iron Shell damage, pretty much, so... It's it's a hard fight. They need to initiate perfectly, and they need to get the kills on the important course. Yep. All right, Empire. They're smoked up, but turns out to be a pretty defensive smoke here as they just head back to their own jungle. C deck are starting to take control here, and they've actually taken the, the biggest goal lead that they've had so far this game. Only about 2,500, but a sign that momentum is definitely going their way. This Undying now has a Glimmer Cape as well as a Gemma True Sight. A lot of mobility tools here, and. Another way to deal with this Invoker, who's now just picked up a Blink Dagger. And the Manta's up on the Ember Spirit now, so oh, he doesn't yeah. have to worry about the Silence anymore. He's going to be pretty happy with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Blink Dagger on... Okay, Blink on... I like that. I like that. It's kind of a solution. Um, basically, get away from that guy. And it's it can dodge the attack from Templar Assassin. Her projectile speed's pretty low, so he'll definitely be able to dodge those attacks. Might get spotted Here's first, though. So he's got his blink now, but then gets initiated on. Throws the tornado, but he dodges it. Cold Embrace as well. He's going to have Ghost. They're coming around the other side. Empire are not ready for this snowball forward. They've already lost their invoker. Now they're dazzled. Oh, maybe they can turn it with the wall. The, okay, Winter's Curse does bring down the Tusk. Cheeky as well might die, maybe. Just back up and kind of reset here. He's still oh, the alive The Blade Mail reflecting damage, but... Silent. He's so oh, low, he, he so falls. Much. They just get to do it. Now Yoku, he gets taken off as well. The Winter Wyvern just barely survives. His team fights are just looking so one-sided. And I mean, Tusk also buys back again. Uh, Tusk did? Yeah, Tusk bought back. Oh, okay. He definitely died in that fight, that's for sure. So he'll buy back and it'll be another Roche. This is just looking disastrous for Empire. Yeah. I just, I feel like there's no Bloodseeker synergy in their draft here. Like, they're, like, yeah, Iron Shell lowers people's HP and he comes faster, but you know, he had such a bad laning stage, he didn't get anything out of his lane, then he had to shift to jungle, then he slowly jungled, then he got killed twice, and he's got all these items, but he really needs a BKB, because once he gets stunned once, he stops auto-attacking, and he's not doing anything else after that. Like, he could actually just chase down Ember Spirit and threaten Ember Spirit with a with a five shot or something. He could be hitting TA and breaking refraction charges or something, but as soon as he gets snowballed, he just dies, because Lena's gonna follow up, and everybody's HP is too high at this point for his blade mail to actually be viable. Yeah. BKB coming out for the Bloodseeker, but still doesn't have the Mithril Hammer. Tier 2, one of two uh, outer remaining towers for Empire. About to get turned to rubble here by C-Deck. I like the way C-Deck are doing this. They're taking objectives, but they're not really over committing. They're happy with these little victories and just go back to farming. Playing very controlled here, even though they are getting a lot of momentum. It seems like yeah. just a few minutes ago, TA got this Desolator. Now she has a completed BKB. They're not even little victories. They're moderate to large victories That's every true. single time. They're like four four man kills kind of the stuff. And it's going to put Emperor, Empire in a place where they're just going to have to start doing smoke ganks and hoping for the best because they are very, very quickly losing this game. Yeah. Somehow, still the Bloodseeker and Darkseer are number one on net worth, but the rest of the team falling further and further behind. The Winter Wyvern and Dazzle uh, getting further behind the supports of C deck. And I mean, can we even call this Alina a support at this point? She's got 2,400 gold and a Yule Scepter. I mean, she is pretty scary. Empire gonna get spotted there. There's a trap on the Winter Wyvern. He's gonna try to TP. It doesn't work. Yeah, definitely not happening. Resolution, he'll TP out, as will Yoku. So they do kind of Delta split into the trees. Oh. Long TP for resolution. Almost got caught there, actually. And those are all kills due to traps. Like, that's very good trap positions. They're not really at too many typical spots other than the rune spot. And it's not even at large camps either, where they're expecting people to farm. It's where they're expecting people to walk. There's a huge choke point up in the enemy jungle here. They're very likely to walk through this path if they're trying to not be found. Same thing goes for this one. Little tiny pass here and there, and they put the traps on them so they can spot the enemy heroes so that they don't need observer wards to see where they are. Mm, yeah, great point.
All right, C deck spread out right now. Only one outer tower remaining. Looks like Shiki will just do a little bit of pressure on it Radiant's as the Undying secures attack. his Solar Crest. So more and more utility items. Shiki still has this Aegis of the Immortal, though. Oh, actually, a lot of time. Two and a half minutes on it still. Empire struggling to kill tier one towers right now in the bottom lane. EMP does connect on aggressive, so he'll be forced back. But C deck splitting up the map very effectively here, Purge. It's still really tough for him to blink dodge anything. They do get the tower, which is good for him, but um, level 13 doesn't have any exhorts yet. He probably, you know what he really needs is a Deafening Blast here. It'll be really good when he gets his exhort level because the Deafening Blast skill will be able to disarm for up to four seconds. And C deck's very right click heavy. That works for Ember Spirit, that works for TA, prevents him from attacking. But TA's got the whole BKB thing that kind of makes that harder, but yeah, yeah. it's another solution. Empire's in trouble, or Silence in trouble, actually. No BKB yeah. for him. He reflects some damage, but... Another easy pick off. And does he actually have the BKB completed? He does. It was on the Courier, though. That's a little bittersweet there. I don't know if it would have even kept him alive, honestly. Yeah, that's probably it, it was looking bad either way. Well, Empire trying to split here as Resolution and Yoku put some damage onto that Tier 2, but Sea Decker charging right at the high ground. They go in on the Witcher Wyvern. Cold Embrace as well as the Shallow Grey buys him some time, but Cheeky uses the BKB, wants the Wyvern, but can't finish him off. Compliments of that Glimmer Cape. And this 10 second BKB from Shiki, a, a little bit underwhelming. Still with the Bloodseeker down, C deck may Dyer's continue to siege. Or not, attack. they'll rotate up top and go for the easy tower. I think they landed the EMP on the Ember Spirit as well, so it really limits his ability to do things. He's actually a very mana intensive hero. Searing Chains and Flame Guard, that's 220 mana. Every Slight of Fist is 50, and if he wants to use his ult, it's 150. Mantle 165 as well, he really needs much more than 300 mana points to be effective in a team fight, so that's probably why they backed off. Yeah. Uh, and just like that chaos, one of the reasons drums is a uh, core item on the Ember Spirit for most builds. Yep. Um, the movement speed also helps, but yeah, that mana pool is definitely an issue. So Outer Tower is all dead here for Empire, it's just high ground that they need to defend. And this is where space around the map for them becomes difficult. You take a look at Dire Vision and they've got very aggressive wards. And this is not even side traps, just ward coverage all over Empire's jungle. So if they leave that base, Cedic will have eyes on it and they'll be looking to gank. Their position waiting for it. Ember Spirit comes back, grabs Silent on the mid lane. Does he have BKB? He does this time. Will he pop it? No rupture just yet. Cast rupture now, BKB, and now that's it. Ember Spirit's finally gonna die, I think, here. Throws another hit. He Whoa. doesn't get him. I can't believe it. It was so close. That would have given him like a full heal or something. And now on the other side, Yoku trying to run for it. Looks like he will make it out. Shiki doing a lot of damage onto Aloha Dance. Golden Brights buys him some time. But now the cavalry's here. Another grave will buy the Wyvern some time. But just time is all. He'll end up falling. Now Resolution gets dove on in the base. No escape. And Empire feeling like their options are limited here. Siri chains on two. Dazzle dies. And this is about to be a five for nil wipe. That's it all in the grave. There are a couple of buybacks here, but Empire may be tempted to just tap out and go to the next game at this rate. This is turning into a bloodbath. Here we go. Double buybacks used. They will fight it out. They got it. They're not giving up yet. They've got vacuum wall as well, so Tornado comes through, doesn't catch the Ember Spirit. All right, C deck, they're not going to stop here. They don't no longer have the Aegis. That was a little fused, but okay, now we go in Yoku. Doing some good damage, finishes off the Tusk, but it will cost him his own life. Darkseer is down, now Resolution on the run. A lot of damage coming his way. Laguna Blade will finish him off. That's, that's got it. Be. That's yeah. it, GG. Man, Empire was in such good position in the early game, but C deck basically just did the five man strat, and the hard carries of Empire weren't there. It's a Bloodseeker. Again, Bloodseeker shows that late game. He's not comparable to a typical hard carry. Yeah, you've got Rupture. Yeah, you can snowball with it, but he shows his weakness again, and C deck plays around it. Prevent the ganks, and your farm is mediocre at best. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw that the the weakness of Invoker just in general. On that as well. Yes. Um, you know, we, we talked about the difference.